m.com 56 sakas amayuta 114 sn.56.1 underscore underscore sn.56.20 sn56.9 vigahika sutta wordy warfare translated from the Pali by maurice o'connell while she copyright 2009 monks do not wage wordy warfare saying you don't understand this dhamma and discipline i understand this dhamma and discipline how could you understand it you have fallen into wrong practices i have the right practice you have said afterwards what you should have said first and you have said first what you should have said afterwards one what i say is consistent what you say isn't what you have thought out for so long is entirely reversed your statement is refuted you are talking rubbish you are in the wrong get out of that if you can why should you not do this such talk monks is not related to the goal it is not fundamental to the holy life does not conduce to disenchantment dispassion cessation tranquility higher knowledge enlightenment or to nibbana when you have discussions monks you should discuss suffering the arising of suffering its cessation and the path that leads to its cessation why is that because such talk is related to the goal it conduces to disenchantment to nibbana this is the task you must accomplish SN 56.11 Dhamma Kakapavatana Sutta, Setting the Will of Dhamma in Motion Translated from the Pali by, Thani Saro Bhikkhu Copyright 1993 I have heard that on one occasion the Lord Buddha was staying at Varanasi in the game refuge at Isapatana. There he addressed the group of five monks. There are these two extremes that are not to be indulged in by one who has gone forth. Which two? That which is devoted to sensual pleasure with reference to sensual objects, base, vulgar, common, ignoble, unprofitable, and that which is devoted to self-affliction, painful, ignoble, unprofitable. Avoiding both of these extremes, the middle way realized by the Tathagata, producing vision, producing knowledge, leads to calm, to direct knowledge, to self-awakening, to unbinding. And what is the middle way realized by the Tathagata that, producing vision, producing knowledge, leads to calm, to direct knowledge, to self-awakening, to unbinding. Precisely this noble eightfold path, right view, right resolve, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, samadhi trance. This is the middle way realized by the Tathagata that, producing vision, producing knowledge, leads to calm, to direct knowledge, to self-awakening, to unbinding. Now this, monks, is the noble truth of stress slash suffering one, birth is distressful, aging is distressful, death is distressful, sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair are called suffering, Association with the unbeloved is distressful, separation from the loved is distressful, not getting what is wanted is distressful. In short, the five clinging aggregates are distressful, attachments. And this, monks, is the noble truth of the origination of stress slash suffering, the craving that makes for further becoming, accompanied by passion and delight, relishing now here and now there, i.e., craving for sensual pleasure, craving for becoming, craving for non-becoming. And this, monks, is the noble truth of the cessation of stress slash suffering, the remainderless. Fading and cessation, renunciation, relinquishment, release, and letting go of that very craving. And this, monks, is the noble truth of the way of practice leading to the cessation of stress slash suffering, Precisely this noble eightfold path, right view, right resolve, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, samadhi trance. Vision arose, insight arose, discernment arose, knowledge arose, illumination arose within me with regard to things never heard before, this is the noble truth of stress slash suffering. Vision arose. Insight arose, 
discernment arose, knowledge arose, illumination arose within me with regard to things never heard before, this noble truth of stress slash suffering is to be comprehended. Vision arose, insight arose, discernment arose, knowledge arose, illumination arose within me with regard to things never heard before this noble truth of stress slash suffering has been comprehended. Vision arose, insight arose, discernment arose, knowledge arose, illumination arose within me with regard to things never heard before, this is the noble truth of the origination of stress slash suffering. This noble truth of the origination of stress slash suffering is to be abandoned. 2. This noble truth of the origination of stress slash suffering has been abandoned. Vision arose, insight arose, discernment arose, knowledge arose, illumination arose within me with regard to things never heard before, this is the noble truth of the cessation of stress slash suffering. This noble truth of the cessation of stress slash suffering is to be directly experienced. This noble truth of the cessation of stress slash suffering has been directly experienced. Vision arose, insight arose, discernment arose, knowledge arose, illumination arose within me with regard to things never heard before, this is the noble truth of the way of practice leading to the cessation of stress slash suffering. This noble truth of the way of practice leading to the cessation of stress slash suffering is to be developed. This noble truth of the way of practice leading to the cessation of stress slash suffering has been developed. 3. And, monks, as long as this, my three round, twelve permutation knowledge and vision concerning these four noble truths as they have come to be, was not pure. I did not claim to have directly awakened to the right self-awakening unexcelled in the cosmos with its deities, Maras, and Brahmas, with its contemplatives, ascetics slash hermits, and Brahmans, its royalty and common folk. But as soon as this, my three round, twelve permutation knowledge and vision concerning these four noble truths as they have come to be, was truly pure, then I did claim to have directly awakened to the Right self-awakening unexcelled in the cosmos with its deities, Maras and Brahmas, with its contemplatives, ascetics slash hermits, and Brahmans, its royalty and common folk. Knowledge and vision arose in me, unprovoked is my release. This is the last birth. There is now no further becoming. That is what the Lord Buddha said. Gratified, the group of five monks delighted at his words. And while this explanation was being given, there arose to Venerable Khandana the dustless, stainless Dhamma-I, whatever is subject to origination is all subject to cessation. And when the Lord Buddha had set the will of Dhamma in motion, the earth Devas cried out, at Varanasi, in the game refuge at Isipatana, the Lord Buddha has set in motion the unexcelled will of Dhamma that cannot be stopped by Brahman or contemplative, Deva, Mara or God or anyone in the cosmos. On hearing the earth devas cry, the devas of the four kings heaven took up the cry, the devas of the thirty-three, the yama devas, the tasiha devas, the nimanarati devas, the paranimitavasavati devas, the devas of Brahma's retinue took up the cry, at Varanasi, in the game refuge at Isipatana, the Lord Buddha has set in motion the unexcelled will of Dhamma that cannot be stopped by Brahman or contemplative, deva, mara, or God or anyone at all in the cosmos. So in that moment, that instant, the cry shot right up to the Brahma worlds. And this ten thousand-fold cosmos shivered and quivered and quaked, while a great, measureless radiance appeared in the cosmos, surpassing the effulgence of the Devas. Then the Lord Buddha exclaimed, So you really know, Khandana. So you really know. And that is how Venerable Khandana acquired the name Anakhandana, Khandana who knows. Notes 1. The Pali phrases for the Four Noble Truths are grammatical anomalies. From these anomalies, some scholars have argued that the expression Noble Truth is a later addition to the texts. Others have argued even further that the content of the Four Truths is also a later addition. Both of these Arguments are based on the unproven assumption that the language the Buddha spoke was grammatically regular, and that any irregularities were later corruptions of the language. 
This assumption forgets that the languages of the Buddhist time were oral dialects, and that the nature of such dialects is to contain many grammatical irregularities. Languages tend to become regular only when being used to govern a large nation-state or to produce a large body of literature, events that happened in India only after the Buddhist time. A European example, Italian, was a group of irregular oral dialects until Dante fashioned it into a regular language for the sake of his poetry. Thus the irregularity of the Pali here is no proof either for the earliness or lateness of this particular teaching. Two dot another argument for the lateness of the expression noble truth is that a truth, meaning an accurate statement about a body of facts, is not something that should be abandoned. In this case, only the craving is to be abandoned, not the truth about craving. However, in Vedic Sanskrit, as in modern English, a truth can mean both a fact and an accurate statement about a fact. Thus in this case, the truth is the fact, not the statement about the fact, and the argument for the lateness of the expression does not hold. 3. The discussion in the four paragraphs beginning with the phrase, vision arose, takes two sets of variables, the four noble truths and the three levels of knowledge appropriate to each, and lists their twelve permutations. In ancient Indian philosophical and legal traditions, this sort of discussion is called a wheel. Thus, this passage is the wheel of Dhamma from which the discourse takes its name. SN 56.20 Tatha Sutta, Real. Translated from the Pali by Thani Saro Bhikkhu Copyright 2011. Monks, these four things are real, not unreal, not otherwise. Which four? This is stress slash suffering, is real, not unreal, not otherwise. This is the origination of stress slash suffering, is real, not unreal, not otherwise. This is the cessation of stress slash suffering, is real, not unreal, not otherwise. This is the path of practice leading to the cessation of stress slash suffering, is real, not unreal, not otherwise. These are the four things that are real, not unreal, not otherwise. Therefore your duty is the contemplation, this is stress slash suffering. This is the origination of stress slash suffering. This is the cessation of stress slash suffering. This is the path of practice leading to the cessation of stress slash suffering. YouTube Video Buddhist Sutras HTTPS colon slash slash W